Welcome to Origin Stories. I'm RD. I'm Parrot. We're telling stories behind the digital art revolution. Each week we interview top artists and live stream with the community. Let's go. Today is tomorrow's Origin Story. Story. Micah Johnson, welcome to Origin Stories. Yeah, thanks for having me, bro. Of course. So Tommy Wilson has been on Origin Stories. Matt Caesar has been on Origin Stories. Dirk Vandermeer has been on Origin Stories. Michael Johnson's name has been on Origin Stories an awful lot. It, it feels good to be here today. Yeah, man, I'm I, all great human beings, man. And to be in that company, man, I must be doing something all right. A lot of great human beings. And you involved in a lot of their Origin Stories as well, so I can't wait to dig into all that stuff. But the question for you, and go as far back as you, as you want to go, Micah Johnson, what is your Origin Story? Yeah, for me, you know, Coming from, you know, professional baseball, um, that was always always what I wanted to do since I was three. And, and so to be able to do that um, and accomplish that and to be doing the second act, you know, in art and, and NFTs, it's it's I've taken a lot of lessons that I learned from baseball, you know, failure and what it takes to get to that level. And also things like, you know, like we were just talking about, like not enjoying the moment when I was playing baseball, just being so focused on the next thing and, and really trying to enjoy everything that's happening and, and realizing that it's, uh, I think God gave me this, this second life, you know, as a, as a redo and, 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 and make a difference in the world a little bit better than I was when I was just playing baseball, you know, very selfish sport, you know, individual sport. I guess it has to be selfish, right? Because it's such a high accomplishment, high athletic accomplishment to just be all in, be all focused to, to get to the big stage. Yeah, exactly. And then, then once you're on that big stage, it's just you out there. You know, when you're hitting, it's just you. When you're building, it's just you. And so you got to be hyper focused on what you're doing. You take care of your business. Um, and you play, you know, 180 days out of the year, 190 days out of the year. So there's not much time to do anything else. So I think this is a this is another great opportunity I have that I don't want to I don't want to waste. Before we get to the second act, which is obviously why we're here to talk about that, the first act. The date was April 6th, 2015. How was it arriving and playing in that first game? <laughs> it's pretty wild, man. They, they, uh, it was incredible. Um, we faced uh, your Donny Ventura, who passed away, you know, shortly after, which, you know, something that I've always remember facing him. It was just a battle. Um, him and I used to go at it, man. Um, and, uh, I think my first at bat must have been like 13 pitches and I was just fouling his pitches off. He was yelling at me and I was laughing and <laughs> sold out in Kansas city after, uh, after they had went to the world series. So they had that whole thing, you know, the Kansas city was jumping at that time. And it was just, it was great, man. It was uh, a pretty surreal experience. Um, looking back on it. Were you able to appreciate it in that moment, the whole journey leading up to it from, from childhood on? No, man. No, yeah. no. It was just, it's just a job to me. You know, it was okay. No, what's like one thing, uh, you know, about me is when I accomplish something, it's always like, okay, what's next that we could do, you know, better, you know, or bigger or whatever it is. And so, you know, making the MLB was great. Okay. Now, how do I, you know, prove that I belong? How do I do this? You know what I mean? Um, and so I didn't really get to take it in, you know, like I probably, you know, should have. I don't really remember much of it, you know. <laughs> Isn't it ironic that's how it usually works, right? Like for someone who's wired to get there, that's usually how it works. It's a progression. It's just looking at the next and the next and the next. Yeah, man. I, I, it's good in a sense, but life's too short to worry about what's next, you know. And, and I think it's good to have that intrinsic motivation, but... At the same time, you really got to enjoy it, man. You you know, a lot of work goes into it. A lot of people, you know, are involved in the process of, you know, achieving that dream or any dream in general. So it's, it's, it's I hope I just can do better at just enjoying that kind of stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. And even how you talk about, we'll get to it, but even how you talk about what's coming and, you know, art that's coming and exhibitions that are coming, uh, it sounds like you're much more at peace and, and in the moment and relaxed. Yeah, man, because, I mean, it's so funny with NFTs, you got no control over what the market's doing or crypto yeah. or the market. I don't care who you are, man. You got no control over your fate in this in this uh, industry. So how I look at it is, 
look, I, I, I believe in, you know, the message that I'm trying to portray. Um, and I believe that I, you know, know what can help us expand that message and get it out there using NFTs and, and crypto. And so I just kind of stay focused on that and, and the rest will take care of itself. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, can't really can't really try to be stressing too much in crypto. <laughs> Roll your shoulders back and enjoy the ride. If you believe in the destination, then enjoy the journey, right? Exactly right. Exactly right. So let's separate a little bit from your first life. Let's go into your second life. But the roots of your second life, I'm going to give you two places to go and pick either or we can hit both. And so one, I believe you have roots in piano. And then number two, uh, your first painting, which I think was of Maury Wills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the first painting was, man, I, uh, it was awful. Um, it was pretty bad. And, <laughs> and that's really what's, what fuels me, what fueled me, um, in, in the second act and kind of what kind of fuels me now. And pretty much like a day doesn't go by where I don't think about that moment when, when I was in the locker room and, and I revealed this painting that I worked on all spring training. And the team was, you know, teammates were saying how good it was or how talented I was, you know. And so those words of encouragement, like, it just shows you, like, what that could mean to somebody, mm-hmm. you know, and what that, how that could really affect their life. And, like, why, like you got so many people, you know, on, on social media these days and just want to hate and hate and hate. But, like, hate, hate is so silly because if you could just – there's no point. There's zero point. But, like, if you can encourage somebody – even if it's like, you know, my painting was trash. And so like everybody probably knew it was trash, right? There was, it was, it wasn't good. And they took out, they took um, it upon themselves to say, okay, Micah, this is talent, you know, you're talented, you know? And I just took it and run with it. Now look like it's changed my life. It's changed my daughter's life. It's changed my family's life, you know, Um, a couple seconds out of their day, you know what I mean? And so that's like, that's like really powerful to me is like encouragement and like nice words to somebody really really basic you know stuff we learned as kids <laughs> you know what i mean take us back why so you said you worked all spring training on it take us back to the inception of the idea why do you choose Mari wills why do you choose even to do a painting that particular spring training yeah it wasn't a choice it was it was forced upon me uh well because you know i got traded over to la and 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 that's that winter um, from Chicago, where I spent my whole career. And uh, Dave Roberts was the new manager at the time. And Dave Roberts is a very personable guy. Um, and so he was doing this thing where he was calling all the players up to the front of the, the locker room, all the new guys, and introducing them and, and you know, did the whole thing. And, and was asking guys, like, what do they like to do? You know, guys would say fishing, and, and he would pair them with a veteran on the team, and they would, they would have to go fishing in, like, a bonding activity. And so... I was watching this. He didn't call me for a while, which was a good thing. That's mean I was still in spring training. I didn't get cut yet. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm still here. It's like, I'm sure I'm about to go. And so, you know, I, I get called up eventually towards the end of spring training and, and I'm standing there in front of the, the team. I'm looking at all these superstars. You see like in LA, like there's media. First of all, there's insane amount of media in, in LA. Like you walk into the locker room, it's, the, you can't move. There's there's cameras everywhere. There's reporters everywhere. It's 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 a whole thing. So I was like, dang, what am I going to say? I like to do. And I said, if I say piano, the dude's going to wheel a piano in here one of these days. I'm going to play piano. And I like I played piano growing up, but you know, it wasn't like a thing where I wanted to showcase my piano abilities, right? Um, and so before I went to spring training, I did a paint and sip class. I was like, okay, this is a good you know good place to start. I'm going to say painting because like he's not going to expect me to go get painting supplies and do this whole thing. So I was like, look, I, I, I enjoyed it. I like painting, you know, like, okay, great. Like on the fly, he's like, okay, great. Paint a p- picture of Maury Wills. And I was like, man. And he's like, and present it to the, cl- and present it to the team. And me and Maury spent every morning, like six in the morning, every morning that spring training bunting. So we built this kind of like relationship and for those who don't know, Maury's, you know, Dodgers legend, I don't know how old he's now, like 80 something. And so here I was painting Maury Wills. And, and so I went to this store and got like the basic supplies, you know what I mean? Like this cup stuff you get kids and 
painted Maury Wills like swinging a bat with like wow. <laughs> like a landscape in the background and, and all that and brought it to the team at the end of spring training uh, and showed it to him and and everybody was like oh that's so good blah 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 you know and, and that was that was how it started <laughs> that's amazing so okay where does that painting live now is my next question he's got it he's got it uh, I you no know, he told me he has like this is random but the dude I think he has like a museum like he has like a Maury Wills museum in like some random place like Wyoming or like South Dakota or something weird like that right yeah. and um so he has this museum. He said he's going to put it in the museum, but I, I'm not sure where he put it. But yeah, Maury has it. We're going to have to take a road trip to the Maury Wells Museum. Yeah, dude, I don't know where it's at. When he told me that, I could, it was like Sedona, maybe. I don't know. I can't remember. I mean, can you, I'll say this. You don't have to. But from my perception, just seeing your trajectory and everything that you're doing, thinking ahead. I'm, I mean, you, I think you know how I feel about you and all the things that you're working on. But Fast forward 10 years, that Maury Wills painting, the first ever Micah Johnson, could be an incredible thing wherever it is, wherever it resides. I'm working my butt off to get it, make sure that thing is valuable one day, man. That's for damn sure. Um, yep. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to look at it and be like, dang, man. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> hey, you have to start called somewhere. <laughs> right, yeah, it's all that. Uh, yeah. So, so, okay, you paint Maury Wills. You present it to the team. You get this encouragement from teammates. And you hear things, you know, you're, th this is talent. And uh, what is your next thought? What are you, are you thinking to yourself then, whew, like I just completed this and now I can move on? Or are you thinking I have a concrete next step that I want to take in painting and beyond? No, that whole rest of the year I was drawing and, and painting in my hotel rooms. And and I got plenty of pictures of those. And, you can, and that's what really set me off was be able to see like what i love about art is the tangible like uh, evolution that you can like you can really see your evolution right like progress is very evident and so i was able to see like how much better i was getting throughout the year and so like that that's just what i enjoyed to do i enjoyed doing was was watching myself get better trying different subjects out trying different you know landscapes or, or eyes or, or buildings or you know whatever it was i was doing it and, and that was just uh that set me off man like i I've, I've gone through like the longest stretch of not painting now with all the aku stuff mm -hmm. like the longest stretch ever in the past since that day in, in dodger spring training so take us through give us a couple milestones when the the progress is tangible and apparent so what what would you flag along that journey of when I did this, it opened my eyes that I had leaped a level or when this person reacted that way or when I was able, you know, you, you go where you want with it. Well, I think it was, I did an exhibit at the Woodruff Art Center in, in Atlanta when I was playing with the Braves. And it was, majority of those works were oil paintings. Mm -hmm. And so this was like a, a major evolution for me because it was like people i was doing people and i was doing like hyper i won't say hyper realistic but realistic like shading and, and things like that um and that was like a critical step for me like shading with oil and using oil uh because up to that point i was just using acrylic and i was working under like um the guidance of uh, these pop artists uh duo named shelby and sandy and so they're very you know rigid with their with their lines it's beautiful right but that wasn't, that's not my style. So like when I started getting into oil, I started to, to, to realize like, okay, this is more of my, like, it matches who I am. And so I just exhibited, and these paintings were large scale paintings, like 70 inches wide, um, things like that. And that was the first time that I've like hung canvas, unstretched canvas on the wall and stuff. So that was, that was a major evolution for me, a hundred percent. And like kind of like changed everything about what I wanted to, what I enjoyed and kind of what like fit me. So that was like a, a jumping off point where you start. Did you start to see a future there? Had had you already? I mean, where were you in baseball at that time? Were you starting to segue out, or were you? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I was injured that year. I shattered my wrist in the last, like one of the last days of spring training, and mm -hmm. so I just kept getting all these setbacks, man. Injuries, like you know, Atlanta was a great opportunity. I had a chance to be like that utility player there. Mm -hmm. 
And then one of the last games I shattered my wrist. I'm out for a couple months. Um, and so it was just a grind, absolute grind for me. Um, and so, yeah, I started to look at art as like, what's next? And, and then my brain is just wired in the sense of, I always got to be doing something else, you know what I mean? And, and trying to see what I can learn. And, 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 and I just like learning. And so painting was a new thing that I could learn. Um, so then when I retired in 2018, you know, I kind of had a full year of just experimenting in, in my garage uh, in 2019. Well, 19, I kind of just played golf. <laughs> <laughs> golf year. Yeah, it was a golf year. And then, you know, we had our daughter um, on the way. So I was like, hey, I better figure this out. <laughs> so I got in my garage in 2000 and, you know, end of 2019 and 20 and, and was just practicing my craft, started painting with, you know, using charcoal. I fell in love with charcoal, mm -hmm. um, fell in love with the, color, the combination of charcoal and oil. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, I discovered NFTs. And, and it was really that like pivotal moment, like 2019, 2020, where I started to look at, you know, what I was doing and, and saw a future there for sure. So a question I've been wanting to ask you for quite some time, because I know your origin with Tommy Wilson, right? Or his origin started with you in a lot of ways where you would approach him to do something in 3d uh right in an animation something, yeah, something. yeah yeah so yeah. then reversing it a question i always wanted to ask you personally was how were you an nft thought leader because you were in early you were in early you believed early you were in early in the nifty gateway platform launch and progression so where did that hit your radar who influenced you well the thing about the thing about NFTs is the smartest people and the most talented people are out in the open. You know what I mean? So like back then there was no articles back on like they have now about NFTs and, and all that. There was like three articles, right? Like, and what I saw first and foremost about crypto and NFTs in general was like, you could go in there and make money without having to like, like for, in crypto in general, we're talking about like, you know, mm -hmm. cryptocurrencies, you could make money without having to like ask permission to like make money or try to learn how to trade stocks. You know what I mean? It was very accessible through like a Coinbase, et cetera. And so that's what got me into crypto and that idea of like not needing to go like buying stocks. I don't know how to buy a stock, right? But I can download Coinbase and buy something that can go up and down and, and kind of play that game, right? And then I discovered NFTs. And what I liked about NFTs was at that time, I was making zero dollars, you know, through anything I was doing, you know, or anything. And what I liked about NFTs is the fact that there was people out there creating art and there was people buying it. And it was like, like that, like that accessible and like almost like that transactional in a sense where I was like looking at super rare and you see these people and they're like, you know, creating art and people are buying it. At that time, I was like, I don't know how to get my art in a gallery or, you know, um, or how do I sell art? Like Etsy, you know what I mean? Like, what do I do? And so I just saw this as a, as a really a, a way to get your art out there and hope, hopefully get it sold, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of started getting into the community with like Jimmy. Um, he was like the, my first collector and, and was just helping me like learn about the potential which I'm great. I'm so I'm so glad I met Jimmy first because you know Jimmy is such a person who, who looking at the potential technology and like really using the technology and that's where I, I really enjoy it, you know, and so I was able to start watching and just okay, what what is there for me? Because I I don't think it, it was it, it, I was never going to having my paintings be you know in there and animated. It, it take it, it. I thought there was more I could do, you know, and so that's kind of how I got into it. It's just name another place. How do I get in touch with Jeff, Jeff Bezos? Right. But I can get in touch with Jimmy. Who's one of the like most intelligent, like people when it comes to smart contracts. Right. You know what I mean? Like a leader in the space. Mm -hmm. Like where else can I, this is, it's incredible. I mean, you found that it's such an amazing time where like you, you'll, you'll always be part of that early wave pre parabolic rise, you know, now, now obviously all, all the brands and all the companies and all the personalities, are at least interested, if not in it, if, you know, if not segueing into it. So 
Um, it's a really interesting space to occupy. The fact that you did find it, the fact that you did seek out some of those personalities like Jimmy to educate yourself, it's a, it's a home run, no pun, no pun intended. Yeah, it's um, what's what I say now about NFTs versus it is like there's no other time, there's no other way, time, anything that would allow us to have these kind of conversations with some of these big brands or mm -hmm. big names right there's no other way that we could tr give them value mm -hmm. and because we were earlier because we you know we believed in it we can provide value to some really powerful brands and really powerful you know celebrities right and have access to these people and no there's nothing else out there that would give us this opportunity so it's an amazing opportunity and like that's why you see so many people like everybody everybody's, everybody in nft or crypto is working nonstop. oh yeah and because it's a, it's a chance to really build something special, man. You know, um, yeah. Like we're making a movie, man. Like I never, man. I don't, I don't know, I don't know anything about the movies, you know. <laughs> but we're making a movie. We're having conversations with we have conversations with you know studios, right? They're asking questions, mm -hmm. you know, want advice, and I'm like. Mm -hmm. I can never give them value, like unless they're like baseball. What do you want? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, it's incredible, man. It's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. So you get this idea in your head. You have these conversations with Jimmy. I, well, take it to where you make your first step literally into NFTs after that education process. How does that go down? How do you decide where to go and what to do? Well, whenever I do something, I got to go as big as I possibly can. Mm -hmm in the sense of like, I got to try something ridiculous. And a lot of the times it doesn't work, right? Like a lot of the times it doesn't work. But I, but like doing something mundane or, or something or, or the obvious is just not, I'm not wired like that. And I, it's, I get my ass kicked quite a few times. So like, I told, okay, I said, I can, I can put my paintings on here. I can do this. And I was like, well, let's do this. Let's, the first thing I ever did was a animation of a real time speed of a pitch coming at you. So I drew this player with a bat uh -huh. and then I had this animation of the ball, like timed it out and like did all this math and stuff. And my first NFT was what it looks like when a baseball was coming at you. I think it was like a hundred miles per hour. I was, and that's, when I, that's my first NFT. Like that was it. I was like, I've never done any of that animation before. And I, like, yeah, I just kind of figured it out. And, and, and did that and I thought that's pretty cool you know I love so I, I never played I never played baseball for a formal team but my neighborhood was extremely athletic we had a lot of baseball players in the neighborhood yeah, yeah. and so every summertime it was like meeting the retention basin all yeah. the, you know everyone would come in and so I never experienced 100 miles an hour but I experienced what it was like when a kid that was your friend grew up to play for the baseball team. And as I called it, like that moment where you could hear the ball, yeah. like it, it had that audible crackle in the air. And man, yeah. it was a fear factor, like stepping in against my friend who grew to the level where he was able to throw that fast. There, there's something there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So that's why I wanted to kind of like mimic that with like the it's NFT, amazing. like digital, you know, this is like a way to do digital. So that's kind of what I did, man. Um, and Jimmy, 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 you know, Jimmy bought that, and, yeah. and 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 we were off, man. We had that relationship, you know. And keep us going. So from the hundred mile per hour fastball, where do we go from yeah. there? Yeah, and then that's when I started to animate some of my paintings. So I did a painting, um, you know, that I had, and I and I animated that. And I think Jimmy collected that. But right at that time, so after I released that, that was like maybe like February of two thousand and twenty. Mm -hmm. My nephew asked if astronauts could be black, right? And that's when I heard, like, you know, that that question. And so at that time, I started painting him as, like, with the astronaut helmet on, right? I was making these canvases in my garage, getting the wood, um, painting on, like, wood. I wasn't painting on a canvas. I was kind of wanted to, I was just trying stuff out and was painting on, on these panels. And, and so... For whatever reason, I think it's like divine intervention. I haven't really thought about it too much, but my charcoal style and like the looseness um, of like how I work now and that question, like all hit at once. So 
in early February, not only was I always searching for what I could say in my art, because I, you, first of all, you, to be a successful artist, and I, I mean successful monetarily, you have to give up creative freedom because you have to have a cohesive body of work, right? Like Jay Z cannot go make a country album, right? like in, in his heyday, he couldn't just go make a country album, and, and, you know what I mean? So I truly believe to, you have to have a, a common theme or a common measure, a common style that when collectors see your work, they can say, okay, that's a mica work, right? right. Or that's that's a that's a, a ferocious piece, right? right. Like you, boom, that's how you that's how you go. You can't just do random things and think you're going to people are going to catch on and, and, and whatever. So I was always struggling to a point of like depression and anxiety over like I don't have anything to paint, right? And I don't have a style because I was really good at like shading and oils and all that, but I don't want to be a portrait artist, right? Mm -hmm. In that sense. So all this whole style just hit. And the whole and everything just hit in February, so I started painting him as as the astronaut, and I had some works that I did that were some of my favorite works to this day that I animated as well with his voice, and then that was my next like two or three NFTs, and this is like the jumping off point, like because you know I sold it for you know a great price to a great collector and it was like this this you know the collector bought the physical as well so that's when i said dang like okay i sold the physical I, and i sold it digital you know i said now what's this is interesting you know like this gets really interesting because now i can i'm selling my physical works which i wasn't doing before that and and, and now i'm in the nft game and so i leveraged <laughs> Like, like I, I leverage crypto to say in mean, NFTs to take it to a gallery and say, look, like we, I'm, I'm making these paintings. This is the message behind them. Mm -hmm. We've sold, we've sold them. You know, we've, we're selling. They're selling. You know, are you interested in in, in representing me? And like, absolutely. And so, when they told me that, that was, you know, like, okay, we got a representation. You know, I, I still have my NFTs. And at that time, I, I said, okay, I want my paintings to be my paintings. I think there's people that are super talented at what they do with like animating paintings, and I, and I what I didn't have like a really passion for it. I thought there was I, I, I there's something else I could do, you know. So I left my paintings be at my gallery, and then kind of just try to think about how I can be intertwined into the NFT space without animating these paintings. I love I love the order of operation there, and I imagine I imagine you're one of the first people. Period. End of story. Who reversed who reversed NFTs into physical. Because a lot of times the story that you hear is someone was making physical art or traditional art and then they came over to NFTs and also met some level of, of success in this like nascent market and technology. Very rarely do you hear, and it's one of the first stories that that I've heard of, of the reverse, of you making physical art, but educating and finding su some success in NFTs first, then backing it out, approaching a gallery and then having them then say, yeah, absolutely, we'll re we'll represent you. Let's go. That's really interesting to me. Yeah, man. I mean, look, you in order to be like where I, more how I grew up and like with the, with the limited resources that I had growing up, like in the sense of financial, mm -hmm. I always learned that when your back's against the wall, you're going to figure it out, right? Like it's time to go. And so at that time, back was against the wall. I was making no money, and my daughter was born. You know what I mean? And I was like, shit, man, like, we got to go. Like, and so I was just working, working. And it just like, a, it really like, you know, I felt like God had put that message, you know, that that question and that style at the same time. Because if, if that, if, if, if I didn't have my style at that time, then, it, then I wouldn't know, I still would be searching for my oil painter, you know what I mean? And so... I just went, man. I just absolutely went. Went so, you know, we did the sales. I was like, this is incredible. Um, like, we could pay the mortgage, things like that. When COVID hit, I said, we're going to Maine. We're going to Maine. Got a studio up there, and you know, my fiance's from there, and so it was just me, my daughter, my fiance. 
and that was it. And, and then my studio was in this like unbelievable woods, creek going by, massive studio. I said, this is like, let's go. And so I'd be, I'd go to the studio five or six in the morning. Sometimes I would stay two nights in a row there. And until March of 2021, I worked nonstop, nonstop. And my art got better. I was in there thinking, you know, about NFTs, thinking about how I can navigate, you know, how I can intertwine, you know, the story of, you know, inspiring people to dream without limits and to NFTs. Like, what is my position in this in this game? And 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 not doing something where it's like, I'm just going to make a painting and, and, and do this and, and doing that. Like, what is my real position? What's the long play? I did all that in that studio, man. Um, it was the best thing ever. That's amazing. I love that. So it's like a, that's a story in and of itself. Like the year, the year that you spent in Maine with your family, with your young daughter, like you said, sometimes spending two days in a row at that studio and progressing yourself and, and the, the collision, right. Of your art literally improving and getting educated and thinking through NFTs and what they meant. That's a dream year. Yeah. Cause, cause that, 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 yeah. I mean, it was work, man. Work. I'll never forget just coming home every single day, covered head to toe in charcoal. Yeah. Like head to toe. And, you know, charcoal in my ears and my nose. And it was just work, man. And we had two solo exhibits come out from that, from that, uh, in LA, sold out. Um, and from that, my works in Maine, um, I created Sovereignty with what's that piece with Async, which, which got me the NFT of the year, NFT artist of the year, and um, at the time was like the the highest selling you know work, mm-hmm. uh, and that whole concept behind that, you know, was in that studio thinking about okay, how can I leverage the blockchain? How can I leverage the programmable art aspect? All that in the studio, um, Aku in the studio, mm-hmm. you know, um, yeah, man. Sometimes I believe like some people are, like I'm that way where I'm I have to be away from all the noise. Mm-hmm. Like that's why when I come to LA, I'm in and out. Yeah, because because I work best by just letting my mind go, mm-hmm. you know. And my mind is is you don't want to ever come up here, man. You find some stuff you don't like, yeah. and so so I just kind of just go do my thing and and and, and think, man. Environment environment's a powerful thing. Oh my gosh, it's, every- an, it's an unlock. It's an unlock. It really is. It's absolutely everything. If you're a creative and you and you're in a place where you you're not feeling it. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's, you're not going to make anything. Mm-hmm. Like I think, like I saw somebody like Hebrew Brantley tweeted the other day. Is like if art is like a fart. If you have to force it, it's probably shit. And and a lot of times, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. A lot of the times, the environment, like you you, you get into forcing things. You know. Yep. Take us through. I love this year so much. I could probably spend a whole a whole podcast on it in, a, in and of itself, but I'll ask you this one final question about that year. Take us through one or multiple, like a mundane moment that maybe you think on the face of it, someone else might not understand, but as time passes, like a decade, two decades go by, you look back at that year and you'll always remember this moment. And what, where I'm going with this is I'm such a believer in environment too. I'm such a, I'm such a believer in locking yourself away, throwing yourself into creativity, seeing what comes out 24, 48, 72 hours later. Take us through like the most random moment in that studio in Maine where something hit you, something clicked, you saw something produced in charcoal and it overwhelmed you in that moment. Mm. For me, I think what it was, was I was going through, like, I had a solo exhibit coming up, and I was grinding through it, man. Um, had a lot of works that, you know, I had to create, and, 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 and I'm a very vibe person where, like, if I'm not, I go in there, and I'm vibing, I'm, I'm going, and I wasn't doing anything well, and... So I just like, man, look, I'm going to dump this charcoal powder on the on this canvas. And then I'm going to force myself to try to make something out of it. And it was a massive canvas, massive, like like 120 inches. Um, and for the international viewers, I don't know, I, I can't convert inches to centimeters. So <laughs> it was like, it was 12, 
you know, 10, 10 feet. And I begin to shape like, you know, this face out of it and this, this, this subject. And when I got done, I was like, this is wild because here I am like forcing myself to paint like these realistic things and, 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 you know, try to focus on this. And I just kind of just was creating and creating and erasing and, and, and all that. And when I got done, you know, I was like, this is incredible. And I sent it to my gallery and they're like, yeah, it's, it's cool. You know, it's cool. And then I sent it to him. Like, I was like, look here, just, I'm going to send it to you, frame it, you know, and, and put it up. And so when I got out there and to LA to this show and I saw it and it's on this mass, it was, it's absolutely incredible. And it was, it, it was just like a very normal day. And I just, you know, dump charcoal, let's figure it out. You know, and we'll just see what happens. And it's just a race. And then, you know, pick my head up. That was, that kind of changed everything for me. Like, yeah. In a, in a weird way, in that day, you put your back against the wall, right? You dumped it out. Yeah. Like, it, yeah. it was there. It was there. You're like, I have to go do something with this now. That's awesome. I love that. Exactly, man. Exactly. Exactly. So take us through the exit then. So how does that time period come to an end? How do you make the decision? All right, this this place in Maine has run its course, and I'm now ready to take the next step somewhere else with the family. How does that come about? Yeah, it was just my daughter was uh, just getting, you know, she's getting older and need to be around kids. So, you know, you know, you know, morning COVID, they don't have any interaction. I got, you know, four nephews back home. So it's like, let's just go back there. Let's uh, let her get around. You know, I've been working for a year straight. Let's go back there, get her around, you know, her nephews and let them, you know, have fun together. Um, kind of thinking that, like, I would kind of be able to chill a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. um, and, got an office in a studio there and but that was not that's not the case <laughs> not at all <laughs> no no not at all man and so that was just a family decision that was a family decision um but we are going back there here um because i got i got some paintings i need to get done mm-hmm. i'm going back up there flying from la to back there and back and working on some paintings are you excited super excited man super super excited I have a whole routine up there, whole whole thing, like with the community. Like I go get my breakfast here, get my coffee there, get my lunch there every day, same place. Isn't it crazy? It sh- it sounds like we might share the same belief, but you tell me. There's this this line. Uh, there's like there's different derivations of the line, but it's basically there's freedom and structure, and it's a bit counterintuitive, right? I think Jocko Willink said it. I think there's an organizationalist that said it, but it's like if you have this routine. And then you have a period of time that's carved out for creativity. As much as it may seem like rigid and and from step to step to step, how do you feel about that? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Because recently I haven't had that routine. Like I've been all over the place. I got to do this and get thrown off and nothing's coming, right? No creativity is coming. Mm-hmm. I think that's true for anything that we you want to, you know, be successful at, or even like think about everybody in the NFT market or in the NFT community that's been here, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody is busy, right? Everybody I'm sure is working to build this like potential generational wealth and this opportunity, like this, this is like the gold rush, right? Mm -hmm. And to really make an impact on like the future of technology and and, and that whole thing. A lot of people are going to get burnt out because this isn't going to stop unless you have a structure. Like I'm going to get burnt out if I don't establish a new structure, mm-hmm. right? And that structure, like you, to your point, will, will create that freedom. Okay, so now I have, you know, from 6 a.m. till 10 a.m., I got, you know, I'm going to do workout. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to eat breakfast. Then I'm going to do my meetings, you know what I mean? And then from 10 to 1, no meetings, create, you know, thinking time, you know, things like that. Or else you're right. You're going to get burnt out, and that will create that freedom, you know, that you that you seek. I, I, I love that. We're in that phase right now. We're in that phase right now. I think there's going to be a, a a whole group, and I hope someone listening to this gets inspired because I think there's a whole group of people who are facing burnout, like very real burnout, either now or soon. Um, yeah, I hope there's that restructuring. It's tough. It's tough to totally restructure the brain, the approach, everything, you know, coming out of such an intense phase and going into more of a, a structured build phase. It's hard. It's a difficult thing to do. 
because you've seen everything on Twitter. Like you go on Twitter, and it's like a new project here, a new project there. This project did this many dollars. This project's doing this. You know what I mean? So you feel like you're constantly behind the 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 eight ball, or like oh they're working hard. I gotta catch up. I gotta do what they're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But but I think but yeah, like you, you're going to get burnt out. Like it's we we've been in this for it's only been four months since this boom. February, March, April, May, June, five months, six yeah. months whatever it is. Since like it became this, and now everybody's you know emailing you that you your favorite athlete or your favorite celebrity is like wanting to talk to you about NFTs, you know, like it's only five months, man. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> what did Bezos? Bezos worked for like twenty seven years at Amazon. <laughs> That's right, right. You can't work at this level for 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 that long, like so. There's got to be some kind of you got to either scale or you got to be able to like delegate or or or, or collaborate or do, do do all kinds of different things or to ease your workload you know yeah let's talk about the world that you're building so it began my my favorite question and the question admittedly i had known of micah johnson i had seen you know i'd done all my nft education and i was learning i felt like every day i was learning about several more artists right and you were always kind of on my periphery like i was aware of your name i would have been able to to, to quote it i would have been able to That's give like, like, yeah. i can be on the periphery i don't want to be no dead yeah. center man you, you see me every now well, and then well, it's funny though because I, I, so I'm a baseball fan from from a kid, right? And so I kind of knew like, Micah Johnson's in here. I was a, a little bit aware of you from baseball, and and our, so I feel like it was just waiting to happen. And then the question hit me, right? When as you launched your first NFT surrounding Aku in series format, I mean, in in terms of the chapters that you were you were unleashing, and the question was, "Mom, can astronauts be black?" And it was reading up on your vision some of the messaging behind that. But that one question, I told you this off recording, but it's like, when you can boil down such an incredible message, I think so many people can get behind and can see and can see the value and the vision in. But when you can boil it down to five, five words with a question mark at the end that represent the entire broader story, that's an incredible thing. And that hit me over the head. So can, I know you speak to it a lot, I'm sure, but can you speak to that question a bit and uh, and what it meant to you? Yeah, I mean, for me, you know, and, and you talk about you think about like a young kid who's like four or five, you know, you don't know what's going on in their brains. Like they're just constantly thinking of stuff, or you know, or how something's impacting them, or where are they getting this information, right? Like, I don't know anybody that has kids will understand. Like they just say something so, one day, and it's like, how do you, you know? Yeah, and so. <sighs> For me, it's like something happened where he, you know, my nephew felt that, or or or, or something in his brain. So he saw it somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Where he where he had to question that, and it's not because of oh, like he's not getting exposed to you know black ash- black astronauts or anything like that, but but it, it just speaks to okay, kids are sponges, mm-hmm. right? And they can be they're very impacted by. The, the very littlest of things that we might overlook. Mm-hmm. And so something it, something made my nephew believe, we want to know if astronauts could be black, right? Something, okay? And so I was like, okay, I got to show him that he can be an astronaut, right? Like, so I, my only way I could do that was painting. Like, no, you know, very, very simple thing for me to do just to show him. And, and and I saw his reaction in, in the paintings and how excited he was and like how cool he thought it was, right? And and I was like, look, man, like this is I never felt that before, that where it's like really fulfilling to do something that was that fulfilling. Like as like baseball was not that fulfilling because it was just I was going out there hitting a ball, you know. And to me, I thought, okay, if kids are this impacted by the littlest of things. And what if I created a character, you know, based around this that we could get out to the world, you know, maybe it's like a a TV show, an educational character. Maybe he's like, you know, like Coco Melon, you know, or just people, they can, the kids can just see this character, you know, like my paintings were, a lot of times I don't mean, I didn't even know the name of some of my collectors from the, you know, these, these shows. And so I was like, let me, a character releasing it crypto natively, like 
I didn't know a studio. I didn't know a name of a studio or who to talk to about a movie or anything like that. I didn't even think of it like that. I was like, what, what, what would be a cool character that my nephew would like to look at, right? Or, or, and that's kind of how I came up with Aku. It was very simple, like very simple. I was like, okay, this is cool. This is a way for me to cohesively combine what I'm trying to like convey in my artwork, my paintings, and NFTs, so that like whenever you see my paintings, whenever you see you know what I'm doing or what I represent, you see it all, and this is a cohesive message. And 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 that's really how it came about, man. It's just like. My nephew was impacted by something. And if we can get Aku out there, maybe that Aku can impact somebody, or maybe we can tell a story or the movie or the TV series, and maybe that could impact or encourage somebody the way that my teammates encouraged me. And we never know what that what those kids could be. You know what I mean? So that's kind of how it started. I like that you tied in that encouragement too. You know, the encouragement that you it goes back to the encouragement you received that day in the locker room when you were presenting Mari Wills and, and your painting. And even though now you look back and you say, maybe I, maybe my painting didn't deserve that encouragement, but maybe it did and you got it and you got it and it clearly impacted you. And then now taking it to, at the time, a four-year-old, Elijah was four when yeah. they first asked the question, taking it four, but then five, six, seven, receiving the encouragement at those ages, it can be exponentially more impactful. Man, it's, um, yeah. Because you it's so, kids are so, like they have access to so many potential negative things. Like they're watching YouTube, they see these YouTube kids making all this money, or so popular, getting these views, and and like, who's encouraging them? Who's saying that you're smart enough? You know, like who's telling them they they anything is possible? And for me, like, I never met a major league baseball player growing up, right? Never met a professional baseball player. Didn't know the steps, so I was naive. I never had a doubt, right? I was naive because I said, okay, look, I'm, this is what I'm going to do. And I wasn't, I didn't get to see other kids on Instagram, you know, hitting balls farther than me, you know, I, that wasn't as bad as exist. So there's constant, constant um, avenues where kids can compare themselves. And even adults, we comparing ourselves to other people, other artists, other, other builders, other founders, other entrepreneurs constantly. And with Aku, it was just like, okay, this character could have the impact on my nephew. It could, you know, representation is massively important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I didn't expect it to do what it's done by any means, by any means. But that speaks to really, that gives me so much hope because it's like people really want the, a better world. They really want their kids to be exposed to something like this you know they didn't at that point when we did chapter one nobody knew the story of aku nobody still the movie no one knows what the movie is but they believe in the potential in, 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 of something like something special like this well they believe in the creator too right it's create it's the creator it's the question it's the story it's like the collision of a number of different variables in a project and now it's amazing to now see that be walked through from a chapter one to a chapter two and you talk about the, the peripheral things that are in the works and, and that are possible here to create something that's truly larger than itself. It, it's, I will say it's a very gratifying thing to watch from the outside looking in as someone who got over, you know, who b believed in the message, jumped into the Genesis, you know, 001, that was, that was an amazing moment. Um, I got to ask, so you have this, you receive the question, you obviously have the idea, you walk the idea forward, and then you go to create the character that's going to live, you know, in the chapter to chapter NFT. Mm -hmm. How does it make the how does it make the jump to the to the character design that we know and love today? Well, yeah, so I forget who I was speaking to. Like I had this idea of this character, you know, sketch of this character, all this, and I think I reached out to man, I can't remember who it was, but like, oh, you gotta check out this guy, you know, I was like, okay, let me, what's his name? I was like, let me see his work. And it was, and it's like, it was uh, Dirk, Dirk, Dirk at work. He's like, yeah, he, he makes stuff. He made a character for me, an avatar for me. And I was like, cool, cool, cool. And so this is where I truly believe this project is like, I don't even, I don't even think about like how it works anymore because everything's just fitting so beautifully, right? 
And so I reach out to Dirk and we talk and and he's like, yeah, yeah, I could do this, you know, no problem. And I was like, you know, he was like, oh, it'll be X amount of dollars. I'm like, okay, great. Like, let's, let's, let's see what we can do, you know, with no idea of what, what we're doing, you know, like of the, what we're doing. I just wanted the character, you know? Um, and me and Dirk just like hit it off, man. And I'll tell this to like my fiance and all that. It's like, when you have a person that like you connect with on this level of like, just the way you brain works, it's really special, you know? And so hit Dirk up and I said, Dirk, man, like, this is great, man. Like, okay, let's, we're going to do, I'm, th I'm thinking about doing this in, in chapters, you know, and, and things like that. And so, you know, come up with the concept, like, Dirk, you what do you think about this? And it's just like, we just, he was just got it. He got it. You know what I mean? You know, Dirk, like he just, he's, he's incredibly, he's an incredible human being, man. And so, we did chapter one. I was like, Dirk, I think this is this could be something special, man. Like, look at this. Like, we, you know, it. And now, like, <laughs> and <laughs> it's funny because I was like, Dirk, we gotta we gotta do this. Like, he got me doing the Oculus, and and he got me creating all these things in, in 3D and, and and things like that. And it's like, it's just such a like an amazing experience with Dirk. And then as we expand the team more now. Cause we're getting like, we got more projects, we want to do more things. Now we have a really clear roadmap we need to like achieve. And like, you know, I don't want us to get burnt out. Um, watching Dirk now take over as like, talking to other creators and like, okay, this is the rules of Aku world and all that. It's, it's, it's special, man. It's really special. Yeah. I love that we have that connection, man. And I think it probably led us to connect at, at some level, but uh, I agree. Everything you said, amazing human being love love just thinking about the you know the micah johnson dirk vandermeer connection yeah 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 it's um it's fantastic man and, and everything we're doing is so methodical mm -hmm. but yet so free like mm -hmm. we have rules we have guidelines we have styles you know and you're really going to see that over the next couple everything we do now is now that we've been able to beef up and and, and really have you know, this level of production now, everything we do is, is a reminiscence of what Aku World is, the movie and things like that. And so it's it's an incredible process what we're doing, man. Like if we had like cameras around, maybe it's, it's gonna be a big cool documentary one day. <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait. You're gonna get, you'll get your videographer somewhere around chapter four. It's gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, man. Like, even when we bring on new people, they're like, okay, what do, what, what do I need to do? What do I, look create yeah create this is the rules everything that's round is very round you know everything is very straight whatever just create you know we, we, your stuff everybody should have a fingerprint in everything you know yeah. it's kind of like that whole idea of like you can it's very difficult i believe to decentralize ip and i think there's a lot of talk about decentralizing ip and ip ownership over that i think it's very challenging because there's a lot more that goes into it than just like okay here's a story and like let it you know but I think it's very possible to, in, in, in animation in, in general, to have it be a very collaborative effort. And you have a very, and you can have fingerprints and styles and, and footprints of people in, a, in every scene, you know? And, and that's what's really, you know, special about this. It's like 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line, 40 years down the line, when the movie comes out, people can say, okay, like, there's no doubt in my mind that Aku will be this film franchise. There's no doubt. Like that's what we are doing. That's what we're. That's this is. That's where we're at. That's what we're focused on. Is is building this thing out. But you should be able to look back and say, okay, oh look at this. This was made by so and so. This bed was made by so and so. This bed. This bed. You know what I mean? And these creators and these animators that we come in and bring in should be, you know, big names and and doing their thing and creating their. You know what I mean? And that's kind of like. It's really cool, man. <laughs> you know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like freedom and structure, right? You're you're creating the structure. You're creating the ground rules, the the the, the barriers, and then within it, allowing allowing someone to go. Yeah, exactly. And, they, and you know, we brought on somebody the other day, and they made this incredible, you know, model. <laughs> it's too perfect, man. <laughs> like, just have fun. Like, it's too perfect. Like, yeah. have fun, you know. And so. <laughs> It's, it's, it's exactly right, man. Like, we got, 
this is a blast. I'm having a blast, man. I love it. It's it's palpable, man. It comes off you, and and that to me, it's authentic. And authenticity is a powerful thing. Micah, speaking of having fun, we'll play a game. Yeah, yeah. All right, lightning round. I'm gonna throw Ooh. words at you, phrases at you, topics at you, and the goal is just shoot off the cuff, one word, couple words, couple sentences. And if I throw anything at you that you want to hit pause on and just go off on a tangent, please feel free to do that too. All right, let's rock. All right, lightning round. Topic number one. NFT. Uh, you want me to say one word? One couple words, a sentence, like snap reaction. First thing that rolls off the tongue. All right, all right, hold on, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. loosen up, loosen up. Let's go. If you need a stretching routine, we can pause here. <laughs> run that back, run that back, man. Let's do this again. All right, lightning round. Top number one, NFT. Uh, man. Revolutionary, I think. Yeah, revolutionary. Ethereum. The future. Tommy Wilson. Great dude. Phenomenal Matt, human. Matt Caesar. Crazy talented. Meticulous. Dirk Vandermeer. Like a brother to me, man. Dansby Swanson. Man, I love Dansby, man. So much swag, confidence, plays the game the right way, works hard. I don't know, man. I love Dansby. Oil painting. Beautiful. But, but yeah, I love oil painting. Charcoal. Freedom. Nifty Gateway. Literally a gateway. The revolutionized, brought brought mainstream people, made it made NFTs accessible and have a played a huge role in this. Super rare. Got me first into it, man. Really amazing platform. Incredibly incredibly amazing platform. Um, even connecting MetaMask and buying it, you know, back then with Ethereum was like very easy. And so it's a phenomenal platform. Async art. Truly special people in my heart. Um, work really hard. Incredible vision. Um, whenever, we you know, with Christie's and, and when we got brought that opportunity to do Christie's, my first, I wanted to bring them along with me and, 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 and be a part of it because what they build is truly special. I wanted it to be on full display. So, like, I... I I love AC. This is a question, but keep in the lightning round spirit. The year is 2025. Where is Aku? Well, well what is that? Four years? Four years. Movies out, mm -hmm. you know. There's a whole educational and STEM program built out. You know, kids are using Aku, teachers are using Aku as a conduit to learn. Um, we've, yeah, like something crazy, man. Probably like, like I think Aku at that point, I really hope that we've had inspired and changed a lot of kids' lives. We've donated a lot of money. We've created programs that are sustainable that can, you know, from the revenue that we're doing, it's cool and all, but I think it's really important to make sure that we build programs that can withstand, you know, just a movie that's bigger than just a movie that we can, you know, give gateways and avenues and new new paths to job opportunities and, and, and STEAM programs and, 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 and fields. and. I think we can really do that on the back of, you know, what we're doing now and the foundation that we're laying now from play to earn gaming, creating, you know, financial freedom through, you know, playing games in, in areas where, you know, you see what Axie is doing in, in, in the Philippines and after the, it's really impacting real lives. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, doing as much as we possibly can to bring participation from people all over the world and making sure that we are giving back and never focused on the revenue, but more focused on the impact that we're making and the numbers and the people that we're, you know, I think the movie is great to spread the word and, and get the message out there and connect with kids, but the infrastructure, infrastructure that we're building by 2025, I hope we can look back in 2055 and say, wow, like we've, we've done a lot. We've uh, encouraged a lot of kids to, and, and empower them to achieve their dreams. Go there. That's the next. You said 2055. I was going to go like 2040. Go somewhere when you go somewhere when your nephew has a nephew. What do you hope to be able to say about Aku, or, and and or what do you expect to be able to say about Aku at that at that frame of time? The same thing. Like we created a generational character, like Mickey Mouse, mm -hmm. but it, but this character's inspiring the world, changing the world. You know, through our storytelling, through our world building that you know people are have participated people from the early days who have the aku token are, are you know are passing that to their kids and and, and 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 there's this ecosystem of I don't know I don't know I'm not the most eloquent person but like I could see that like we can build the infrastructure now build the film franchise out and and, and really build it in the sense where, and this is why we're doing it crypto natively, because you can really include participation from the community early on. Mm -hmm. And so imagine, you know, you have the Aku token, you're in the Aku token playing the game, and you, you know, that token has still holding its value 40 years down the line. The movies are still coming. The shows, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, Mickey Mouse, what came out 100 years ago, right, or something like that, right? So that's my hope. Now, I don't know if we'll get there, man, but if we can impact people along the way, then that's still is successful to me. You know, I don't I don't want my name attached to it. I don't need my name attached to Aku. It's not about me. Um, but I don't like that. And I get that, you know, it will be attached for now, but eventually I would hope that Aku stands alone and it's a built by a community for the community, for the for people all over the world. And that when I'm dead and gone and people just talk about Aku and carry on that legacy and that we build a program that can help so many people, man. That's it. Money, you can't take money with you, man. It's very true. It's very true. And I, I love that when you talk about it, you talk about things that are done for, you know, for the visual and the, and the attention, like the movie and, and those, those things. But you also pair it with that sound understanding of the infrastructure and things that you're building. You know, the play, the play to earn is a really fast, really fascinating concept. And, and how far that something along those lines can have the ability to reach is, is truly astonishing. So um, I personally 100%. appreciate I, I think you're being very eloquent. And I like that you're putting those two things hand in hand as you walk that vision forward. 100 percent, man. We'll fail along the way. We'll have some you know speed bumps along the way. But I think that if we focus on as we expand and, 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 and all that and scale, if we focus on one thing and that's. How can the first person to ever buy Aku Chapter One, how can they be a part of this story along the way? And how can we impact, you know, their life, encourage them to spread the word? Like what how can we incentivize them? Mm -hmm. and start with them, then build it out and say, how can we encourage the next generation of kids? How can we, you know, get, you know, and just slowly start building it that way. And, and then I think we'll be all right. I agree. I agree, man. Um, and to, to last question about the Aku chapter, but something that I just did recently, why should jump, why, why should someone jump into your discord server? Cause it seems it's, it was a, I just, I knew it existed. I found the prompt. I jumped in. I'm happy to be there, but t tell everyone what's going on down there. What's so special. Yeah. Like and the whole idea with the discord was that like, is it goes back to like the Christie's auction as well as like, have you ever impacted a movie or created a movie, right? Like, have you ever had a say in a movie? Like, I didn't. So, like, imagine if you could have a say or vote on, you know, parts of Toy Story. Mm -hmm. And, like, and so, like, the Discord was set up, and, like, now we're, in August, we'll, we'll be coming out with, you know, voting mechanisms and, and ways to really 
make it very simple for people to contribute and have an impact on the movie. So when it comes out, it's like, oh, wow, like, I remember we voted on this and, the, you know what I mean? It's just a way for people to participate, engage, and, and it allows kind of like us in the studios to like say, okay, like a lot of people are talking about this storyline, you know? Um, and so that's kind of like the importance of the Discord is to participation, you mm -hmm. know, of film building, story building, world building. Um, that's it. Two moments of shine as we wrap up the lightning round. Two moments of shine for somebody else. The last piece of art. And it, let's let's stay NFT space. The last piece of NFT art, literally chronologically, like could be yesterday, that made your jaw drop. Um Mad Dog Jones posted something like some like orange vignette. Um uh -huh. and I was like, man, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. 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 Then yeah. chronologically, the last piece of NFT art or just an artist in general that you thought to yourself, why don't more people know about this piece of art or this person in general? That's a good question. That's a good question. So many are like blown up, man. I had one, Lathabo. You know, I had Lathabo as like the the one that's like, man, this is incredible. But yeah, you know, Lathabo was at Christie's and, and things like that now. So I don't know, man. I think everybody's getting their flowers right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if you have one after the fact, let me know. I mean, hey, it could even be Lathabo could still be the answer. Even the, even someone who's getting their flowers, it could still be you know a, another level up. I remember one of my. Favorite answers to this question was a little while back where someone said ferocious. Someone said, I, st I still don't think he's big enough. This is pre Christie's, but it was like, uh -oh. I, st I still don't think he's big enough. And now obviously you're seeing where that's going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, all good. Good, awesome. nice work on the lightning round. Kept it rolling. Got a few a few topics late there on the Aku front that went a little deeper into, but I love it. As we, as we wrap here, Micah, Christie's coming up. What a moment. I mean, I have a hunch it's not the first moment, several moments in, but along an, an absolutely epic journey. But anything you want to say about Christie specifically? Yeah, Christie's is awesome because it's, you know, programmable artwork that every day it follows the sun. So, like, you know, sun rises and sun sets. It kind of symbolizes, like, the work it goes into to achieve your dreams. You know, it's Aku introducing a new character. And what's really cool about it is the the the... The, the owner of the work will be able to decide if they want to remove the character's helmet, the space helmet, to, to reveal what the character looks like. Until they do that, our hands are tied. We can't, we won't create anything with the character's identity. It would always be helmet. And so they could really impact that narrative of the film because, like, okay, like, what if they never take the helmet off? Mm -hmm. And, like, we're creating the film and we're, we're going now and, like, we can't create a character without the helmet, you know what I mean? So we got to put it in there with the helmet. And so also, too, they're going to name the character. And I think that's really, really cool because, like, we talked about Mickey Mouse and these movies, like, Toy Story came out, like, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever it was, right? Imagine, like, you had your daughter. Like, I, if I'm a dad, like, if I could name a character after my daughter, you know, and, like, so you can see that. And, like, that's so cool, man. And it's on the it's on chain, so you know, like, you know, it's yeah. like, I love it, man. It's really, really cool opportunity for people to to participate in, in, in that way. It's really incredible the level of thought on multiple fronts that you're giving to others and their impact on the story. That's unique. It's not unique to want people to pay attention. It's not unique to want people to buy into some level and then those dollars can then go to investment into the concept and they can have an impact in that way. To me, it's unique at multiple levels from the Discord server to the specifics of the art piece to considering play to earn, like the, the number of different fronts that you're exploring to have people make an even more direct impact, to make real decisions on behalf of the journey. Think about this, man. When, when would this ever happen again? Like, when would the NFT boom hit right when we a character is dropped, right? When will all this come together? When will this question have to have be answered you know for my nephew when will this happen again so i feel like this is really god putting all these pieces together 
you know, and saying, okay, like, and so why would I keep that all to myself? Mm-hmm. Like, how fun is that? Like, that's not fun. Like, that's not fun at all. So, sure, I always tell people, we can for sure go make the movie. Thanks, everybody. Here's the 10 chapters. Keep it moving. We're going to make the film, run the whole play. And I'll be all right. But that's not, that's not, that's not what Aku represents, you know? Um, I think that for me, Aku represents doing things, chasing dreams that seem so far-fetched. And to be able to say, okay, wait, we're going to allow the community to participate. We're going to build infrastructures that allow them to participate in the success of the franchise. We're going to allow great infrastructures that can allow them to play the game, educational. We're going to let them participate in the in story building. That's what Aku represents. Like, and if I fail, if this fails and you know we don't make a good film or these infrastructures don't work, I gave it a shot, man. And that's and, and that's I think that that will have a more of an impact, even if it fails, than just going in with the saying, "Okay, bye, everybody. We're going to make the film. Here's the film." Agree. So that's, there's it's it's no, I won't lose sleep. We can sleep over it. Well, hey, man. From where I'm sitting, everything looks like it's on a, a really really incredible track. Uh, proud, proud to be, proud to be involved at any level with the with the Genesis piece, and um, I'm Thank very, you. very excited. I hope origin stories. You know, obviously, it's a lot about origins, but I for sure think there's room, time, and place for milestones along the way. I hope that somewhere along the journey of the chapters, we're right back here talk talking about who knows, who knows. That's that's the most fun part. Awesome, man. I really appreciate this. Yeah, man. Mike Johnson, thank you so much. Thanks, talk to man. you soon. See you, bro.